Hi, this is Band Together, a Family Guy fan fiction episode. Absolutely no AI was used in the making of this. It was entirely written and performed by a human being, me, Eric Bay Anderson. Hence why the quality of the voices ranges from not so great to pretty good in my opinion. Since I don't own Family Guy, any of the trademarks, characters, etc., this is not for monetary gain. It is purely for entertainment purposes. Enjoy. We now return to Mary Poppins. George, what on earth are you doing? I thought you were supposed to be interviewing nannies. I was, I was. You mean you've selected one already? Yes, it's done. She's in the nursery. I, I put her to work straight away. How clever of you. I would have muddled the whole thing. Thank you. I want the vote. Yes, quite. Gosh, you know, every time I watch this movie, that Dick Van Dyke, he... <laughs> Van. Uh, Yeah. Anyway, his accent in this film is, is just terrible. It's the worst English accent I've ever heard. I mean, who talks like that? <laughs> Lewis, this tomato sandwich is ghastly. I want some graham crackers instead. What the devil are you staring at? Nothing, nothing. Not now, Stewie. Your father and I are off to the art museum soon. Brian, would you mind keeping an eye on Stewie while we're out? Yeah, sure. Whoa, whoa, hold up. We're going to an art museum? Yes, Peter, they're having an exhibition of the work of that hot new French painter, and you said you'd go with me. Well, that doesn't sound like something I'd say. The artist's name is Francois Boobies. Ah, your claim has more credibility now. And don't back out on me, Peter. I've really been looking forward to this. It's going to be the highlight of my month. Really? God, that's more depressing than that Pixar sequel. Next. Cause of death, sprayed, stepped on, eaten. Burn with a magnifying glass. Ouch. Well, go on through. You'll find all the picnic scraps you can eat in there. Oh, boy! Next. Cause of death. Uh, eaten. Yeah, right. You jerks never tell the truth. It's bug hell for you. <laughs> oh, my wings don't work here! Next. Oh, of course you're welcome here, sir. Go straight on through. How come he gets in automatically? Uh, hello, praying mantis? Go right on in, sir. <laughs> Joke's on them. I actually worship the buck devil. I've got some errands to run, so I'll meet you at the museum at two? Eh, fine. Good, see you then. Peter, we're still gonna have time to do our thing, right? I cleared my whole morning for it. Huh, decided that drinking and staring at family members while they're on the toilet could wait till the afternoon, did you? Don't worry, Brian. Nothing on earth is gonna stop me from keeping my promises today. Absolutely nothing. Hey, Jerome, how about another beer and my usual snack? Coming up, Peter. Nothing what? What? You just chugged your beer and said nothing, like it was the end of a sentence. Did I? Oh. Well, I never was very good with words. It always held me back when I worked as a public defender. You gotta help me out here, Brandon. Do you know anything about the convenience store robbery last night? It ain't like I'm not saying I don't know nothing about it. You ain't? You, you don't? <sighs> Alright, somebody get me a pen and paper. I got some freaking word math to do. Mm. Eh, it's Brian. What's he say? Yeah, you know, bark, woof, moo, the usual. <phone rings> ah. Now he's calling you? Yeah, this is Lois. Hey, Lois. Peter, I'm at the art gallery and I can't see you. Where are you? Lois, it was the craziest thing. I went to the clam, but the art museum wasn't there. But the clam was still there, so it all worked out. Fine, I'll go by myself. Okay, love you. She's always cooped up in the house. This'll be good for her. Good evening, I'm Tom Tucker. Some of you may be wondering about my appearance. Well, suffice it to say, my insanely hot new girlfriend belongs to the Church of Bug Devil worshippers. And she only dates fellow church members. I'm told if anyone objects to the way I look, I can sue them on religious discrimination grounds. So complain away, bitches. My ladybug's got expensive taste. He changed religions for a chick? She must have a bigger rack than Cinderella. I don't remember that being part of the story. Cleveland, if the prince could only identify her by her slipper, I think it's safe to assume he wasn't staring at her face for most of the evening. Good point. Chicks do it for guys too, you know. Isla Fisher converted to Judaism for Sasha Baron Cohen. So she gets to be Jewish and married to the guy who played Borat? What's in it for her? He got her a two-line part in the Brothers Grimsby. <sighs> Bad trade, Isla. Bad trade. 
In other news, the Kohag Arena has announced it will be hosting a Battle of the Bands contest this Friday night. So if you're a teen in an 80s high school movie with something to prove to the popular girl, or if you're just someone who enjoys hearing classic songs performed terribly by amateurs, you know where to be. Cool, they're doing a local Battle of the Bands. Peter, you and I should totally enter that. Quackmire, that's a great idea. You got a guitar, right? So do I. We could be like a folk duo. Yeah, we can... Wait, have we... It feels like we've done this before. Well, it may seem that way, but if you've been paying close attention to the timelines, you'll realize that technically, no, we haven't done this before. Huh, I guess you're right. Well, timelines can be confusing. Just ask Wolverine. So, what's going on here? We're sending you back to the 1970s, Wolverine. So I'll get to meet my younger self? No, we're sending your consciousness back into the body of your younger self. Uh, okay. Uh, will you be there? Yes, but I'll be played by James McAvoy, so I won't look or act anything like me. Ugh, this is confusing and ridiculous. Jennifer Lawrence will be there wearing nothing but blue body paint. Let's do this! Ah! Hey, how about all four of us form a band? Yeah, I don't think so, Joe. I mean, me and Quagmire both play guitar, but you guys don't play nothing. That's not true. I play the euphonium. What the hell is that? It's like a fancy word for tuba. It took ten years of lessons. Why? I had a very strict and very strange mother, who I'm fairly sure was nailing my euphonium teacher. Yeah, I don't think so, guys. Oh, well, come on. We could be like Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. That's not a very persuasive argument, Joe. And I'm pretty sure that reference went right over the heads of our predominantly young male audience. Yeah. I mean, maybe a couple of older dads got it, but that's it. We did get it, and we appreciate you catering to us. Another reference most people won't get. Okay, so it's decided. Joe and Cleveland will do whatever the hell they want for the next week, and me and Quagmire will enter the Battle of the Bands together. Sounds good. Now we just need to write some songs. Yeah, but what are we going to write about? Here's your food, Peter. Thanks, Jerome. Hey, did you put butter on this Pop-Tart? I sure did. Oh my god, this is so freaking good! You ain't never put butter on a Pop-Tart? I haven't. Well, I think you should. I will. Oh, this is amazing. But seriously, what are we going to write about? Alright, we need to come up with some song ideas. Okay, how about this? What good is a superfood If eating it makes me feel sick Why should I eat any food Recommended by judgmental pricks it won't make me stronger or make me last longer when my dog is inside. Me, I prefer to chow on a burger, ground beef or fur, I don't mind. Hey, that was pretty good. Thanks. Okay, I got one. I used to be a cow farmer, must have had about 20. I could have had 50, but I thought 20 is plenty. I had milk in the morning and lamb chops for dinner. Did I mention I also had sheep? Not bad, Peter, not bad. Thanks. It's based on the years I spent as a cow slash sheep farmer. Hey, baby, want to go to a movie tonight? I'd rather stay home and get rammed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you get a cow slash sheep. I know we said no anniversary gifts, Rupert, but you're supposed to want to get me one anyway. It's called being thoughtful. Stewie, can I ask you something? Yeah, maybe a pound or two, but you know what? The fur hides it pretty well. What? Oh, you did, n never mind. What, what, what were you going to say? How would you feel about reforming red shirt, blue shirt? Wow, what brought this on? Peter bailed on our plans yesterday, and now he and Quagmire are entering the local battle of the bands. I thought if you and I entered, we could steal his victory and teach him a lesson. What plans did he bail on? He was going to take me to the park for a walk. Brian, you have a car. If you want to go to the park for a walk, why not just drive there yourself? It's not the same as being taken, and you know that. Sorry, sorry. Look, look are, you, are you in or out? Tricky question. Kind of changes week to week depending on the situation. But I'd love to enter the contest with you. Oh, I'm so excited. Like when someone finally finds their perfect job. Ha ha ha! It's funny because ha 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 is what I already say. Ha ha ha. Feels good to get the band back together, doesn't it, Brian? Sure does, Stewie. And you know what I just realized? You and I have our own guitars, and so does Peter. We're a three-guitar family. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Okay, before we start, 
are we sticking with the name Red Shirt, Blue Shirt? Because I was thinking this might be an opportunity to mix things up, you know, try something new. Hmm, what do you have in mind? I don't know, maybe like a clever reference or something. Like UB40, they got their name from a form at the unemployment office. Huh, a reggae band that was frequently out of work. Shocking. Hmm, new name. How about Stew Dog or Dog Stew? No, too obvious. Plus, it kind of sounds like Chinese food. Don't joke about that. Okay, I guess we can come up with a band name later. Let's get to work. All right, check this out. I can't decide which Chris is best. Hemsworth, Evans, or Pratt. What about Pine? He's also fine. I'd wear him like a hat. Like a hat? Like a hat. My very own Chris Pine hat. I've given up on the Marvel films. Seems now they're all reviled. For Love and Thunder, it sucked. No wonder Taika Waititi's a child. He's a child. He's a child. A 48 year old child. He's a child. He's a child. A 48 year old child. Oh my god, Stewie, that was amazing. I know! We're more creative than a Seth Rogen movie pitch. Okay, basically, my character gets a girl pregnant. And it also stars a bunch of my buddies, and we smoke a lot of weed, and we make a lot of dick jokes. Hmm. Okay, this one stars me and a bunch of my buddies. We smoke a lot of weed and we make a lot of dick jokes. Only this time, it's set during the apocalypse. Hmm. Okay, this one stars me and a bunch of my buddies. We smoke a lot of weed and we make a lot of dick jokes. Only this time, we're animated sausages. This. This is why he's a superstar. Meg, you look terrible. Uh, you sound like my gynecologist. Nice shirt, by the way. Thanks. It's the latest boobies. What? I can't get LASIK, but you can afford to reinflate those floppy joes? What? Uh, sorry. I'm just cranky because I didn't get much sleep. Dad and Mr. Quagmire were singing and playing guitar all night, and so were Brian and Stewie. I'm exhausted. I haven't had such a sleepless night since I was abducted from the orphanage by the BFP. So you use that trumpet thingy to give kids happy dreams? Mm-hmm, that's right. I just wait till the young'uns is fast asleep, then I slide my horn on in there. There's some blowing. And everybody has a good time. Wow. But why did you snatch me? Well, to be honest, Meg, it, it was dark. You were the first one I saw. and Well, well I, th I thought it was a boy's orphanage. You see my mistake. I know how you feel, Meg. I didn't get much sleep either. You know, Brian's only entering the competition to get back at Peter for abandoning him the other day, just like he did to me. I say good for him. In fact, what do you say you and I enter the competition too? Oh my god, yes! Are you serious? Absolutely. Peter needs to be taught a lesson. That man has less idea what's going on in his family than a guy who's been in a coma for ten years. Oh, Jerry, we never gave up hope that one day you'd wake up. Oh, I love you, my darling. Oh, but there's so much that I've missed. What about our grandchildren? What are they up to? Well, Dylan's an optician. I see. Michael's a record producer. Sounds good. John's a stand-up comedian. No kidding. Tyler's an escape artist. Get out of it. Janine works in a chocolate factory. Sweet. Freddy's a ventriloquist. You don't say. Gwen's a hunter. Oh, dear. Simon's an electrician. What? Sophie makes quilts. So? And Tanya digs outdoor underground water storage facilities. Oh, well. <laughs> You know, Stewie, I think we've got a decent shot at winning this thing. Yes, as far as I can tell, our only real competition is Neil and Mort. Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make me cry? Because that's what your hurtful signs would suggest. Get off the stage! Uh. Well, if it isn't the short ones. What are you guys doing here? We're performing too. What? You guys are in the competition? That's right, and the Hemingways are gonna kick your ass. I didn't approve of that band name, by the way. I wanted to be the Twerky Boys. Lost the coin toss. Oh, please. Like we're seriously worried about losing to a dog and a baby. 
How about the two strong, sexy women? I, I, I don't get it. Is, is the other strong, sexy woman behind Meg? No, Peter. Meg is the other strong, sexy woman. Oh. No, hold on. Wait a minute. What are you guys doing here? Same as Brian and Stewie. We're here to beat you at the thing you'd rather be doing than spending time with any of us. I see. So my entire family has turned against me. Uh, actually, Chris isn't here. Where is he? I think he had that spelling bee today. The next contestant is Chris Griffin. Okay, Chris, your word is facetious. Yeah, I'm sorry. I-, I was under the impression we would literally be spelling the word B here today. So that that that's all I've practiced. I see. Well, can you spell B for us? M. Damn it! Fine. You want to challenge us? Go ahead. I'm not worried. It's not like your non-family members with unusual instruments. Not so fast. Cleveland, not so fast. We're supposed to arrive together for maximum impact. Sorry. Joe, Cleveland, you're competing too? That's right. You're not the only ones who were hurt by Peter's selfishness this week. What are you talking about? You and Quagmire teamed up and abandoned us. We're not used to being mistreated and overlooked. I assume you mean by your friends and not society in general, because that... That, that I would find hard to believe. We... We really made you feel that way? You did, Peter. And you guys too? Well, now I just feel awful. Although that could be the six cans of expired frosting I had for dinner. No, it's guilt. I'm really sorry, you guys. I never meant to make you feel like you don't matter to me. I don't even think I want to compete anymore. Me neither. Now hold on a second, guys. I'd like to suggest something I've suggested before. Joe, I told you, I'm not a fan of ramp-related activities. No, supergroup. What? All eight of us join together to form one awesome band. That way we're sure to win. Think about it. We could be the next Tinted Windows. Tinted Windows? What the hell is that? Oh, come on. Tinted Windows, the supergroup made up of Taylor Hansen from Hansen, Adam Schlesinger from Fountains of Wayne, James Iyer from Smashing Pumpkins, and Bunny Carlos from Cheap Trick. You know, Joe, it's not that your ideas are always bad. You're just awful at selling them. Yeah, you know, we reference a lot of obscure crap on this show. Hell, we even dedicated a whole two minutes of an episode to recreating an old jelly commercial from the 80s. But that is without a doubt the most obscure reference we've ever had. I guarantee you not one viewer understood it or got a laugh out of it. And I further guarantee you that not even the people you just mentioned have ever heard of that so-called band. You dropped the ball on this one, Joe. But I like the super poop idea. Super group. Ah. Wait a sec, guys, they're announcing something. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner! A winner? How can that be? The competition's barely started! That's right, our winner is a young British singer by the name of Adele. Let's hear it for her! Adele? What the hell is that formerly frumpy skank doing here? Hey, is that any way to refer to the Queen of Music? I think not. I thought that was Beyonce's title. I said Queen of Music, not pregnant photo shoots in fake gardens. I don't get it. She didn't even perform. I'm not familiar with her myself, but I'm told her talent is so immense and undeniable that to ask her to actually sing would be both insulting to her and devastating to our other performer's self-esteem. I therefore pronounce her our Battle of the Bands winner! How about that, folks? A plucky young contender comes out of nowhere to win it all. Talk about a Cinderella story. Her story is nothing like mine. Excuse me, Mrs. Adkins? She got a last name? Why would you come to a small town like Quahog to compete in a local singing competition? I mean, you've won Grammys, an Oscar, or a Golden Globe? Yes, but not one of these. Wherever there is an award I have not yet won, that is where I'll be. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must return to Britain to compete in the Women's Open. Giggity! I don't believe it. We lost. We didn't even get a chance to perform our medley of erotic nursery rhymes. Maybe it's all for the best. To be honest, we didn't really have a lot of time to prepare for this, so we were just going to lip-sync Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves. Oh, that's my favorite song ever that was written, recorded, and produced entirely by a man. Annie Lennox co-wrote that song. Sure she did, Brian. Sure she did. Actually, that's another reason I suggested the supergroup earlier. We didn't prepare any songs either. You didn't? No, we spent all week coming up with our band name. What was it? You phone it, Joe. It's a reference to my euphonium and his banjo. Plus, my name is Joe, and I can't really play this thing, so if someone were to call me a phony, they'd have a point. You can't play that thing? You're a great big phony! You're not wrong, sir. Guys, we're sorry we excluded you. 
I feel terrible. Me too. And just so you know, I would have conceded defeat to you two on the strength of your name alone. Thank you, Peter. Super group hug with me between anyone but Meg and Joe. Aww. Uh. You know, add some weed and some dick jokes and this would make a pretty sweet movie. Boy, I sure learned something today. What do you mean? You haven't done anything today. If you learned something at the contest, then surely what you mean to say is, Boy, I sure learned something last night, because as we saw from the establishing shot of the house, it's clearly the next day now. Chris, why are you wearing a hat indoors? What? I learned that the most important thing in life is spending time with your family, and you should never take them for granted. Ah, that's sweet, Peter. You know, it was kind of cool. We all chose to wear the same outfits. I know, right? Boy, if those things paid for themselves. <laughs> and you said we should have just rented them. Peter, they cost $900 each, and we've literally only worn them once before when we filmed the opening credits. Twice. Remember, we had to reshoot it in widescreen. Buying them meant we couldn't afford that operation to make Stewie's head normal-shaped. Money well spent.